Hello everyone, I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and I have some more breaking news in the Bob Murray versus John Oliver defamation case that was dismissed about three weeks ago from West Virginia County Court. After the case was dismissed, John Oliver went on his show and said the following about the case. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. And look, before we start this evening, a quick update regarding this show, because you may remember last year we did an update on Cole in which we talked about this man, Bob Murray. Now, we said a lot of things about him culminating in a seven-foot squirrel telling him to eat shit, and he sued us for defamation. It's true, that case has actually been going on ever since, but just this week we learned that the judge has said he is going to dismiss it. Now, it's not final yet, it's not final yet, and I've been advised not to say much more for now, so I won't, because as the people know, now is not the time for victory laps, it's not a time for gloating, it's not a time for saying, hey, we won, and just rubbing it in the face of that person who lost over and over again. That time will come, oh, it will come, and I promise that we will discuss this whole case as soon as we are able to. Until then, my furry friend, away, away. He'll be back. I promise. He'll be back. This seemingly prompted Bob Murray to draft and send his own letter to the judge expressing his disappointment in the case. Fortunately for us, Mr. Murray did not serve that letter on the opposing side, prompting the judge to make that letter available on the public docket for all of us to see. The judge writes, This date, the court received the attached unsolicited missive from the plaintiff Robert E. Murray. As it does not appear Mr. Murray forwarded copies of the same to defense counsel, pursuant to Rule 2.9b of the West Virginia Rules of Judicial Conduct, the court has copied and enclosed the correspondence herein and filed the original in the court's file. Mr. Murray's letter is an improper ex parte communication with the court. Therefore, the request therein to reconsider the court's decision cannot and will not be entertained. The court respectfully requests plaintiff's counsel to advise Mr. Murray against future ex parte correspondence, which could result in sanctions against the plaintiffs in this matter. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Sincerely, Jeffrey D. Kramer, Chief Judge, Second Judicial Circuit, State of West Virginia. You may remember we've dealt with ex parte communications with the court in the Imagos versus Alex Maurer case. I'll put a link here. Without further ado, then... I present to you a dramatic reading of Bob Murray's ex parte letter to Judge Kramer in the John Oliver defamation case. Dear Judge Kramer, we are deeply disappointed to learn that you intend to dismiss our lawsuit against Home Box Office Inc., Time Warner Inc., Mr. John Oliver, and others, collectively defendants. We will appeal that decision in due course. The jobs of our 6,000 coal miners depend on me and my reputation. My name is on the company, and I am the one who our 140 lenders, our utility customers, the regulators, and the public look to in order to keep these jobs. You have enabled the defendants to further destroy our miners' families. We write to you today to inform you of the continued personal attacks and harassment by the defendants in this case. Indeed, just yesterday, the defendants aired worldwide the enclosed attack on the undersigned and our company, whereby John Oliver taunted us, once again stating, eat shit, Bob, and announcing that once your order is issued, he will gloat, and he will be rubbing it in the face of the person that lost over and over again. This clearly demonstrates the vindictiveness and intentional destruction that the defendants have caused. It also shows that these attacks will continue in perpetuity as a result of your order. Order. I am a dying old man, but our employees will pay for your decision. Further, since your ruling, we have been subjected to multiple insulting and threatening email and telephone messages, including these, Bob kiss my ass, hey Bob, I guess John Oliver f**k you in your ass, you are a real evil piece of shit. Consume defecation, Bob. What an old and selfish of a human being. You and your industry are no longer relevant and your entire world knows it. Congratulations on having HBO make you look like a big, fat, lard-ass loser in court, idiot. Ha ha ha, you fat pig. You lost your lawsuit. Burn in hell, Dr. Evil. This is a very small sample of the flagrant and extremely damaging personal attacks that we continue to receive on a daily basis. 
Accordingly, we respectfully request that you reconsider your decision to dismiss this lawsuit and allow this case to proceed on the merits. Indeed, this lawsuit is extremely important to our employees who rely on Murray Energy and me for their continued livelihoods, and to our lenders, customers, and suppliers who depend on our integrity and performance. We cannot sit idly and allow our jobs and livelihoods to be destroyed by the cruel and baseless attacks of these defendants. Sincerely, Murray Energy Corporation, Robert E. Murray, Chairman, President, and Chief Executive Officer. Wow, what a piece of work, right? Normally, when an industry is in decline, its industry leaders look to ways they can adapt the business, or they simply lay off employees until the business can no longer support itself and then shut down. Neither of these are really the best prospects for a company. A company always wants to grow, right? But the coal industry is declining mostly because coal is not the cleanest alternative to oil or other unclean forms of energy. Coal itself can be very dirty, so much cleaner forms of energy like wind or solar, as they become cheaper, people who care about cleanliness will go further and further away from coal. There will still probably be a great need for coal, but it will not be at the same level that, that was supporting Mr. Murray's companies before. So normally when you have a decline like that, the industry leaders adapt the industry to something new. Maybe he could mine something different, or maybe he could help retrain his workers to do something that is more profitable than the mining he's doing. These are difficult prospects, but they're not impossible. However, the prospects of suing a television program that's making fun of the situation, that's not really something that's terribly prospective now for your... That's not really something that's, that's really prospective now for your employees and your companies. He's blaming the effect on his reputation uh, and his, you know, with 140 lenders and utility customers and regulators and the public as if John Oliver created the situation that allowed HBO and the show to make fun of him. That's not what's happening here. That's just sort of a uh, misunderstanding of it like we've seen time and time again from people like James Romine and a few others of our favorites. We do have some more updates to come on this. Next time, we'll review the 28-page document that is currently in the mail to us from the Marshall County Courthouse, and we'll have a whole thing about why it's in the mail and not in my inbox right now. Thank you to our supporters, without whom this wouldn't be possible. Special thanks to DJ Gilcrease, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, The Godslain, Evie, Andy, Kyle Mudrock, John H. Anderson, Veriment Tain, and Sean McNamara for their support at the $50 per month level on Patreon, as well as the over $200 5-plus Patreon supporters scrolling on the LED panel behind me and on the screen right now. Thank you to the Marshall County Clerk's Office, who have been so nice while putting up with our near-daily phone calls, and thank you to our staffer, Tactical Bra, for making those phone calls. And last but not least, thanks to all of you for your amazing love and support for our efforts to educate the lawful masses. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. Have a great weekend.